Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's ECEGSA academic seminar. This week we have invited Ling Lu Zhu. He's working with Professor Jeremy Monday. He got his bachelor degree from Huazhong University, uh, University of Science and, and Technology in 2011, I think, in the optic optical electronics information engineering. And he got his uh, master degree of double E here in University of Maryland. He is now working uh, on some fundamental theory for the solar cell energy conversion. Okay, so time is uh, time, time is of yours. Okay, I like first thank Kitchen for this introduction and happy year. And now I'll start to present the uh, topic is the upper bond of energy conversion efficiency in nanostructures of cells. Here is an outline of my presentation. First one, I'll talk about the fundamentals of the photovoltaics. Then I'll introduce a little bit about the uh, detailed balance theory, which we use for analysis of the uh, photovoltaics. And then I'll use that as a tool to analysis the nanostructure of solar cells. And after all of that, I'll make a conclusion. <coughs> First, fundamental of photovoltaics. Now, solar energy is kind of a uh, hot topic these days. Think the main, there are three main reasons. First of all, it is very abundant and it is renewable. The global energy consumption in 2012 reaches 18 terawatts and it is estimated to be doubled in about uh, 40 years. And uh, the other fact is that we are running, we are eventually running out of the uh, tradi traditional energy sources like coal or petroleum. So we need to find a uh, replacement. Right? The uh, radiation, solar radiation, offers on the Earth offers like uh, one twenty thousand terawatts. If we can use a tiny amount of it, it'll be enough for the uh, to offer the you know requirement of the uh, consumption. The second main reason is that uh, it is environmentally friendly because it is totally safe and clean. It is safe because, well, compared to the uh, some new energy source like uh, nuclear, they'll not, you know, create some disasters. Like, you know, you heard about it in Chernobyl, Soviet Union, 40 years ago, and uh, in Japan, like uh, in 2011, right? And uh, it is clean because when you are doing the when the solar cells are doing power conversion process and not generate some you know, carbon dioxide <coughs> well, which is generated from the uh, burning of the coal and petroleum or natural gas. Right? So it is very environmental friendly. But and, excuse me, yes. uh, how about the manufacturer process? Is this uh, so environmentally friendly? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you can like perfectly all of these you know, stuff to uh, increase the you know to decrease the uh, harm to the environment, right? And well, if you say that uh, it is uh, not environmentally friendly, like you know, it, you uh, generate uh, you produce the uh, equipment, well, it's not environmentally friendly too, right? So we don't talk about that. But talking about the energy energy conversion process, it is very environmental friendly. Okay. The uh, third reason is that it is adaptable. It can be adapted anywhere. And uh, well, the good thing about it is, like, think about uh, if you you're living in a mountain where you can hardly get electricity from, you know, the uh, Providers from the net uh, electricity network, you can you can install a solar panel on your roof, and you, that can generate power for your house. And uh, well, that's some, something we're doing 
no uh, terror, terror power war, it's, you know, something like that. And the energy conversion process of the solar cell, you know, as I mentioned, is, you know, solar cells kind of uh, a device that converts the uh, solar energy into the uh, electricity. So we, what we do care about is the energy conversion process. And it is draw like that. Uh, like the pictures here, you know, the uh, white box is the uh, uh, is the conduction band, and uh, the green box is the valence band of a semiconductor with solar cells. You know. <laughs> if the uh, photon injection, a uh, photon is injected on the device, the electron hole pairs will be generated. And uh, if you know if you leave the circuit open, then you know the uh, since the uh, carriers will accumulate more and more, it'll build up the potential. And uh, you know the voltage generated from that we call it VOC, the open circuit voltage here. And if you connect the uh, balance, the uh, cathode and anode here with the external circuit, then you have a short circuit current, which we call it, uh, well, we denote it as ISC here. So we have a modified diode, diode equation, which is like this. Because you know, if you generate some circuit here, so it's I S C minus the uh, this, this I zero, we call it reverse saturation current, and it is changing exponentially with the voltage. And V T here is the thermal voltage. Okay, so these three uh, parameters are what we care about in the uh, solar convert uh, solar energy conversion process, and we want to increase the voltage and current. That we can have, you know, higher power. So you know, the efficiency of the solar cell is higher. So, well, the way that we evaluate a solar cell is based on the uh, detailed balance theory, and it is first raised by William Shockley and Hans Quaser. So, the uh, maximum efficiency of the solar cell is also named the Shockley Quaser limit. Okay. The detailed balance. Well, the definition of detailed balance is under thermal equilibrium and under open circuit condition. The number of photons get into a cell equals to the uh, number of carriers you get out of the cell. Either it is a photon, you know, you leave the circuit open, or it, it or it is uh, electrons. Okay. There are the currents that are generated here. As I mentioned before, it is open circuit current and uh, uh, the uh, reverse saturation current. And you know, because of detailed balance, the, uh, in uh, open circuit condition, the, uh, they are equal to each other. Okay. And uh, the currents are, so the currents have the same formula as this day here. And the only difference is that uh, F here is a photon flux. Well, for ISC, it is photon, photon flux from the uh, sun. And for uh, I zero, it's a photo flux from the ambient surroundings, and uh, the solar angle is different because, you know, for a solar cell, your sun's acceptance angle is only within like a point four six seven degrees. So the solar angle, you know, is around uh, four point six six times ten to ten to the minus four. But for the uh, emission, for the reverse saturation cup. Reverse saturation current is over four pi on the angle because you know your emissions all over the space, right? So in, a, in order to improve the efficiency, let's recall the uh, uh, the equation here, the diode equation here. In order to improve the efficiency, we need to increase V and I. So well, the only thing that you can do is in, either increase ISC or decrease I zero. These two have the same effect. Because both of them increase the VOC. But VOC is defined as open circuit. Because you know, you get I equal to zero, and uh, V should be log ISC over I zero times VT, right? So you need to increase ISC or decrease I zero, or we say increase VOC to boost the efficiency of the solar cell. Uh, the tr traditional way to do that is. Well, first, 
reduce the uh, reverse saturation current, the standard cell has the emission all over the space. But if, if you put a mirror on the back, the emission will be half. And if you put restrictors on the top of that, you can reduce that one step further. And the second way to increase the short circuit, uh, short circuit current <coughs> is using optical concentrators. You see a lot of uh, devices like this in campus, and uh, you know people usually use uh, optical lens, you know, to focus the uh, uh, light from a big spot to a tiny spot of the solar cell. Or you can use par parabolic mirror. They have the same effect. Or the other, another way is to use nanostructured solar cells to boost the efficiency. The reason is that the nanostructured solar cell has some built-in concentration. But if you, if you look at the top two figures, the traditional concentrators have one thing in common. That is the optical cross-section, which is from here and here. It's larger than the geometric cross-sections here and here. But that is why we can have higher uh, efficiency when we're using the concentrators. And nanostructure, nanostructure is at some building concentration, which enables it to have higher absorption cross-section, you know, uh, yeah, this absorption cross-section is larger than the geometric cross-section. Here we define that the absorption cross-section as the absorptivity times the uh, optical cross-section. The absorptivity, you know, is, uh, it just ranges from 0 to 1. Okay, so the absorption cross-section is a little bit smaller than the optical cross-section. And uh, the pictures here, I show here, is the uh, normalized absorption cross-section uh, which is, you know, the optical cross-section over the geometric cross-section. This picture is from uh, one of the book chapters that we published with Springer last year, and it, it shows that, you know, at some wavelength range, it is larger than one means that uh, the optical cross-section of that uh, scatter is larger than its geometric cross-section. That is what we want, and uh, that, that, uh, a phenomenon doesn't require a concentrator. Okay, so yeah, that's the nanostructures. And another expression here to understand this kind of phenomena is, you know, write the uh, formula of VOC down. And uh, the first term is called Cannell effect. You know, it's caused by the temperature difference between the sun and the solar cell. And the second term here is caused by the uh, Boltzmann, Boltzmann distribution or well, difference of Boltzmann distri distribution at uh, Tc is the uh, temperature of the cell and Ts is temperature of the sun. Okay, this, you know, the first two terms are related to the temperature and the third term is the entropy generation. From the mismatch between the absorption, a absorption and emissions of angles. So if you look at the uh, Pictures here for the traditional solar cells, your uh, absorption angle is around this, and your emission is typically you know all, all over, over the space. But for nanostructures, you can have a chance to match the uh, emission and absorption angle, so that you know you can reduce uh, that part, this part of the search term to increase the VOC. And as we said, if you increase the VOC, that'll help to boost the efficiency of the solar cell. Okay, in, the, in order to evaluate the building concentration, we define a reference cell with, whose absorption is one. The light generated current is IL0, and the area is A cell. And then we compare it with the nanostructure solar cell. We also define two uh, cross sections. Here, sigma max is within the uh, within a certain acceptance angle, and the sigma min is the, uh, some you know is outside the, that acceptance angle, and we can relate all of the I angles to the to our reference reference cell, and we can have a formula of we will see here. This this part is for the uh, 
traditional cell. And this X is something called enhancement factor. That is generated from the building concentration of the solid cell, okay, of the nanostructured solid cell. And this X, we uh, extract the, that out and, uh, you know, just discuss more about it. There are two limits here. Well, the first one is ideal case if the uh, acceptance angle is, you know, some acceptance angle. And outside that, the uh, absorption cross section is zero. Then the then we say we reach this full concentration because you know uh, this value of the x reaches uh, is equal to the value of the uh, traditional cell with a very very big concentrator. And the realistic case is that well you can hardly eliminate the uh, absorption cross section outside the acceptance angle. So what you can finally achieve is that, well, this formula here, and we have zero sigma max and sigma jail uh, here. Well, this is the extra term, and uh, you know, we'll access around 1 to 100. That is what you can get. And uh, well, the result here is, shown, uh, is plotted in that picture. It, uh, sorry, the, uh, the picture is about you know, a lot of uh, scientists work on the net structure solid cells, their efficiency and the concentration concentration factors <coughs> there, and uh, well, the reason, uh, and we find that well, it's far away from the uh, the limit that we derive because you know your concentration factor is very low and your uh, fabrication process you know may generate some uh, loss there. And for comparison, we calculate three structures. The first one is standard structure, the second one is you know, standard structure of marrow, and the third one is ideal nanostructures. And we found that you know, if you put a marrow on the back here, this one, from this one to this one, we can find that you know, the efficiency increased by like 2%. But if you fabricate your cell cell into nanostructures, you have the potential to boost the efficiency by like uh, ten percent. So that that is huge for a nanostructure uh, for a solar cell. And uh, well, we also consider the diffusive illumination. The diffusive illumination is coming from you know the uh, a diffusion from the uh, clouds or a lot of the dust in the uh, air. And uh, that part cannot be concentrated by the concentrator, or you know, by your uh, nanostructure salt cell. And uh, we, well, we define two parameters of that. One is that you know the uh, diffusive, the percentage of diff diffused uh, incidence as A here, and the second one is that where the concentration happens. So we have cutoff energy go here. Well, if we move it down to this line, then we have no concentration. And then we, if we move it out here, I mean that we have the concentrations from this band gap to this energy. And here we have no concentrations or say restrictions. And then we plot the uh, influence there here in this picture. And we found that, you know, for all diffusive light in this line, if, you know, the diffusive illumination is 100%, then if you increase this, this value, you know, the efficiency will go down. But typically we are at this line because, you know, the, uh, the global solar illumination has 25% diffusive light. And uh, we can achieve 38% efficiency if we are at this point. So that is for uh, you know design your solar cell, how uh, the guidance for how to design your solar cell. Okay. And the second picture show well, well it shows same same as this one here talks talks about the uh, you know the. Uh, E cut off equals to infinity, so this is just this line here, 
and uh, if you have like 100% diff illumination, it means that, well, there's no light can be concentrated, so the efficiency will be zero. But if your cutoff energy is kind of uh, uh, slightly higher than ESC, maybe here, uh, as it's generally here, it is 1.74 electron volts, then, you know, if, even if it is 100% diffusive illumination, you can have uh, efficiency run 30. So, well, that is good because, you know, you can hardly say, well, what kind of, uh, diff uh, well, the diffusive part is, uh, varies from place to place. So, you know, that's a safe parameter to use for, you know, global type application. And uh, then we run some simulations on that. We numerically simulate some of the nanostructure structure and compare it with the bulk cell of the same thickness. And uh, the calculations is that, you know, first we get the absorption across a spectrum <coughs> and then substitute it into the detailed balance equation and then solve the equation. And I that's all of the parameters we use here for, the, uh, for that solar cell. And uh, well, here's the result. Uh, this one is a uh, bulk cell that we use as a reference. And if you fabricate that into uh, nanostructures, you can see you know, the absorption spectrum, you can above all, almost all of the light here, and that'll help your solar cell you know, to boost the uh, efficiency. And this one is another cell that we uh, reduce the <coughs> Radius one step further from like uh, 70 nanometers to 30 nanometers, and uh, you can see the band gap got shifted up, and uh, the dark current of this one of this one is here is much smaller than the dark current <coughs> of the other two devices, and that will help you to boost up the efficiency of the solar cell. To make a conclusion, well, we use the principle of the detailed balance to determine the maximum efficiency of nanostructured photovoltaic devices. The ideal nanostructured device resulting in efficiency of 42%, and it'll reduce to 38% if you just, you know, use some, uh, uh, if you have like a 25% diffusive illumination, and uh, you know this. Improvement is strictly from the uh, improvement of the open circuit voltage, and uh, nanostructured solar cells will be created that has some limited absorption for angles and uh, wavelengths that do not match the incident illumination. When this condition is achieved, new high efficiency nanostructured solar cell devices will be possible. So, thank you. Are there any questions? I have a question. Yeah. So this kind of nanostructure solar cell is so the ones that we have simulated is like a three-dimensional nanowire solar cell. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of solar cell has been already been investigated by several groups. Yeah. So what's the difference between your research and my research? Okay, here is a, a big misunderstanding towards the nanostructured solar cells. Uh, we see a lot of papers published there, and we find the, uh, it's kind of funny because sometimes we find the efficiency is larger than 100%. That is not possible, right? And uh, we find it funny because it is published in Nature. Uh, so you know, we, start, uh, we investigate that you know how this whole process works and how people misunderstand the uh, you know this process, and we publish a paper to describe that as a novelty of this paper. So, but you can actually uh, go above the shock decreaser limit by using the nanostructure solution. Yeah, we we just generalize 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 that uh, for. Formula so that you know you can apply the parameters of the uh, nanostructure solar cells uh, from 34 percent to maybe 42 percent. 42 percent. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's just you know 
uh, clarify, you know, the uh, you know the upper bound of the uh, power conversion efficiency that we can reach. Any other questions? Oh, so thank you. That's our that's the same our speaker.